we were getting some haunting testimony um, from Dr. Al at the beginning of the uh, at the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic, as he came on the Nolan Show on Five Live week after week to be warning us about what he was seeing on the front line. Let's check in with him tonight and see how it is. Dr. Al, good evening again. Good evening, Stephen. So, how's things? Well, things are um, uh, fine in a way. We, we are seeing a bit of a rise in Northwest, as you must have heard in the news as well, that our, our number is rising. Uh, but I think the, uh, the things that we talked about last week, that, uh, seemed to have, that theme seemed to have continued. So you might have noticed that last week on Friday evening, um, certain policies were changed, big policy decisions were announced. A uh, similar thing happened yesterday. So it seems like that uh, the government is have decided that they're going to make the big policy decisions on a Friday evening press briefing, um, which is a bit uh, difficult for NHS to deal with because the NHS is a bit uh, low on numbers during the weekends. Uh, so there is a new policy with regards to masks, which the NHS bosses are a bit uh, struggling with because we were unsure that we needed this much amount of uh, protective equipment, so masks to begin with, and the government has changed its policy on a Friday evening. And in a way, the same thing has happened, that the NHS bosses were not consulted or bypassed. So I think the big shift at the moment is that in the first two months with the first surge, uh, when the press briefing would happen, uh, we weren't as interested in it because we would get the guidance earlier in the day in a documented form from Public Health England. So as frontline consultants or workers, we knew what was expected or what was coming. Now it's gone to a stage that we listen to the press briefing as well first. That's how we find out what's going to change. And then we uh, wait for the guidance to come through on Monday morning and try and make up our minds. How on earth can you have a, an effective response within a hospital if you're finding out, like the rest of the public are, at a press conference? I mean, at the moment, the last press conference by the health secretary... Uh, it's a bit confusing because the health secretary has suggested that any NHS or health workers or care workers, if one of your colleagues has tested positive, then you guys will have to go into self-isolation for 14 days. So if one of my colleagues were to get tested positive tomorrow, it seems like that the health secretary has suggested that all 50 members of staff that were working the shift on a &E that day should go into self-isolation for 14 days. We don't have that kind of numbers in NHS to run the hospitals, if all of us. And it, it doesn't make logical sense. So basically what we're being told is that if one of my fellow colleague consultants or nurses or junior doctors is tested positive, then I have to self-isolate for 14 days while at the same time I'm seeing other human beings who are patients who are positive, and I'm try trying to provide them care. So wh what I can't understand is how is it different for my colleague to be tested positive as opposed to my patients being tested positive and for me yeah. to continue to work. So it's extremely confusing right now. It's practically not workable. Uh, we we do understand that we live in a democracy, and whatever the health secretary comes up as a policy through Public Health England, we have to implement that. We have implemented that every single day since the pandemic has happened. Uh, but this particular part of the policy, I mean, everybody is left scratching their heads, and we're hoping that there's going to be a lot more clarity on Monday. Tell me about the patients um, and what you're <clears throat> learning more about the disease. So at the moment, just to give you an example, so we, we have this uh, area in the emergency department called resuscitation area, which is for very sick patients. And we normally have eight to 10 beds in there. Uh, in the start of the pandemic, we dedicated all the beds to COVID patients and they were occupied uh, during April. Then as the numbers died down, we, we left only two separate rooms for them and the other eight beds are used for other patients. Uh, for the last two, three days or so, we are using more than two beds for COVID patients again. So we can physically, visibly see that the numbers are increasing. One of the reasons could be because the lockdown has been eased. And uh, as we had discussed multiple times, and the health secretary himself has said as well, 
if the number increased, there's going to be local lockdowns in local areas. Uh, we thought that maybe Northwest would have a local lockdown this weekend, but that wasn't to happen. Uh, so the numbers are increasing uh, ever so slightly, not massively. The only concerning thing is that the evidence of a big second surge, uh, that seems to have only happened in Iran. And the reason quoted for that was that the Muslim shrines were open to pilgrims during the month of Ramadan. So there was big gatherings, which resulted in the second surge. Uh, unfortunately, as you know, that we have had massive gatherings in England today. Uh, people are protesting uh, for the right reasons, but they are massive big gatherings. So we are expecting the numbers to rise. And a lot of local councils in Manchester have reversed, uh, Greater Manchester across the whole uh, area, have reversed their decisions to open the schools. So um, what, from what we can see, the numbers are rising slightly. We expect a bit more uh, rise in the forthcoming days because of the lockdown has been eased. Um, and, and are you we'll worried about a second wave? Well, we are worried about the second wave because things are not... I mean, it, it is a bit concerning. I mean, if, if you take the last two weeks out of the picture, I was, as, as a healthcare provider, I was very happy with the way things were being done and the way we were being led against this, this pan pandemic. But it seems like that the policy makers or the decision makers to the frontline communication has completely broken down now. Um, there's not even a single CEO in NHS who understands the big policy shift towards the masks and people going home. So they're, they're all very concerned about that. We, we expect a second surge if we are having mass gatherings like protests, which I understand that people's democratic right. But you, you, know, you and I know why the protests are taking place. And unfortunately, the, the black community of England, who, who I expect to be uh, in the protests, they have got a 90%, 90% mortality rate with COVID. So these are the people that we really wanted to protect. Hold and, on and a moment. If, Sorry, no, they don't. 90%? Yes, so, so the Asian, Pakistani and Bangladeshi community had an 80% mortality rate. And the black community was told that if you do get COVID, the mortality rate is, is more, and it's 90%. Those That's were the official figures. Mistake. Dr. Al, 90%. For someone that yes. contracts coronavirus... And they're black in origin. Um, 90%, The mortality rate say? is very, very high. And the, statistically, it was quoted as 90% to us. Um, the, the issue is that... What we 19, do know is, do you, are you, you're saying 19, 1, 9? No, no, 9, 9, 0. So the Pakistani community is 8, 0. And the black community was 9, 0. And I'm, I'm unsure what the number for the Indian community was, but it was like 25% or something like that. What is it and for the white community? I think it was 12%. But there is, a, there is a whole tool that we use to calculate the risk. So uh, just to give you an example that... If I had a black colleague working with me, and a female colleague, and she was pregnant, that, according to our assessment tool, is deemed too high risk for her to continue to work in the emergency department. So even if they don't have any underlying health conditions, they have to go home. They can't continue to work in the emergency department anymore. So what do you say to those people who are at those protests? Well, the problem is we, we are living in a democracy. It's, it's their democratic right to go and protest against any injustice that they feel. Uh, I, I just hope that they are all wearing masks and they're... The protest numbers would look bigger if you did social distancing. It'll have a bigger impact, but that would need a lot more discipline. And, and when thousands of people are on the street, that's very hard to, for that to happen. I want uh, to check one more time. Are you sure? I'm that, positive that the statistics. Of the statistic and, that yes, that of I'm, those I'm, people, if, if someone from the black community mm -hmm. gets coronavirus, yep. nine out of ten of them will die. Yes, that, those were the statistical figures quoted to us last month by the Office, Office of National Statistics. Uh, so we, uh, and I'm, I'm positive about that. these figures. So. The, the issue is, and as you must have heard, I mean, the health secretary is asked in every press briefing uh, about the members of Asian, like non-white community. Yeah, yeah and but I didn't hear that statistic. 
Yeah, I mean, it's we don't know what the reason behind that is as yet. But what we do know is that in NHS, we've got a scoring system. We do assessment of our colleagues and stuff. And the only colleague I have had to ask to not to come to work as yet was was a fellow colleague uh, from black community because we, we were worried about their, their risk. The, the, the protest is, is something that, you know, no democracy can say. Like, as I've told you, that a lot of policy that is coming through now I probably, as, as a healthcare provider, I disagree with it, or I'm confused, I'm concerned with it. Um, I did say to you last week that taking the alert level from four to one within 24 hours, that will change public perception. Um, the, a lot of people don't actually now believe. The virus is still there in the community, and people have stopped believing that it's there. Uh, yeah. But and the problem it. is, whatever comes from the health secretary is the policy that we have to implement, because that's what happens in a democracy. He's Dr. the elected rep- representative. So same with the protest. They, they have every right to protest. I just wish they perform social distancing. Otherwise, we're looking at a second surge. And are most people coming off the ventilator? Uh, no, not as yet. Uh, but... Thankfully, at the moment, there's not that many on the ventilator with COVID-related illnesses. So, in a way, I mean, we've had our uh, mortality surge. We've lost a lot of people, 40,000 plus. Uh, But we don't have a lot of um, unstable patients on ventilator at the moment. Good. Dr. Hmm. Al, it's always thought-provoking. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you so much for having me, Stephen. Thank you.